Uh, when planning for and conducting a competitive easily test, a number of variables make the execution of the test a bit more complicated than your traditional standalone usability test. Today, we'll recommend some variables uh, to consider based upon our recent experience with a comparative test involving three ultrasound, uh, premium ultrasound systems. Uh, you'll be interested in learning about these variables if you're looking for uh, making a comparison of your own, uh, comparing your products against others, um, in which the, the product performance in terms of usability is very important. By identifying variables to consider, today's webinar uh, should help you plan and execute a comparative test uh, more successfully. So before we get uh, into the details about the best practices today that uh, we'll go through that Tony mentioned, uh, I'd like to first explain what a comparative usability test is for those that are unfamiliar with it. So a comparative usability test is an evaluation that helps to determine how a particular product performs in relation to similar products or different versions of the same product by having end users attempt to complete the same set of tasks. So this type of usability test assesses if a product is better or worse than others from a usability perspective. It reveals relative strengths and weaknesses as well. It also provides the opportunity to understand what comparable products do, uh, how they do it, what works well, and what does not. So to the extent that usability influences desired outcomes in the product application, these tests can provide uh, useful information for purchasers making product selection decisions, and then manufacturers also seeking to improve product design. So today, uh, we'd like to share with you some best practices for conducting comparative usability tests. And we'll provide some examples from our most recent experience conducting such a test with ultrasound systems manufactured by different vendors. So for this test, uh, my responsibilities lay in the execution uh, of the test, such as creating uh, the usability test protocols, uh, facilitating the test, and then analyzing the test results. Uh, Tony, who we have on the call today too, uh, provided subject matter expertise. Uh, he coordinated the training of the UX researchers, myself included, uh, acquiring the appropriate equipment. Uh, we'll get to that today too. Uh, reviewing all of the deliverables uh, and other such responsibilities. Uh, Doug, who we have on the call too today, uh, was our test sponsor and also reviewed all of our deliverables. So I'll now let uh, Tony and Doug uh, explain the objectives behind the test a little bit more and some of the product history and background to give us a context to this case study that we'll be leveraging throughout today's webinar. Thank you, Annalise. So as health in ears, that term being that we pioneer ultrasound as well as in the healthcare space, we produce innovations. And many of those innovations have come in this very building. So I don't want to leave you in suspense. Um, I'm here in Mountain View, California, Silicon Valley. This is our ultrasound headquarters. As you can see here, my colleague behind me, Amy Wilkinson, is a clinical sonographer that is working with ultrasound. And my colleague Yafe there is actually there uh, to loan his anatomy so we could show you a little bit of what we do in general imaging. We love this stuff. You see, we started a journey to make a paradigm shift in ultrasound usability in 2011. At that time, a cross-functional team of engineers, marketing, product de designers, and as well as our management got together and asked ourselves a fundamental question. What if you could design your own ultrasound system? What if you could choose what you would focus on? And this is an example of a more customer-inspired engineering question. Well, our response was to take seriously various guidelines from regulatory authorities on verification and validation, or the final phase of product design being more focused on user experience, focused on you. So we actually took 10 attributes of an ultrasound exam. Things like patient registration, things like using various design elements like a touch display or a trackball, and tried to say what would be the best solutions to deliver a radiology exam. And then, next slide please, we then moved to invest. 
So we went to a think tank in Princeton, New Jersey called Siemens Corporate Research with this initiative to create a product designed by you for you. We put over a, million, a couple million dollars of investment in studying over 395 users across various geographies. So for any of you logging in, don't think that I forgot Canada or even other countries. I care about you too. But you see, each of these countries represent unique use cases in ultrasound. Germany represented challenges in accountable care that we all can relate to in the United States. The United States represented a diversity of patient anatomy. China had patient throughput issues. I myself was able to observe one user having to get through 50 patient exams in one day. And lastly, um, France, which represents unique use cases in standard of care using advanced technologies like contrast enhanced ultrasound or shear wave elastography. All of them gave us a representative population for user experience research. Tony, why don't you tell them a little bit about some of the methodologies that we took for the 170 usability sessions. Sure, yeah, that's my pleasure, Doug. Um, and, and as you said, we love talking about this stuff, so, you know, uh, this is, this is really good. Uh, so as you know, we started with site visits uh, around the world, and we uh, started with uh, user interviews, which helped us generate personas, which led us to create uh, test, create prototypes and test them. So for those that don't know, personas are just a, a description of the different types of users. So Doug listed some, some of them up there, but we got uh, more complete information. Uh, we, were, we then ran multiple studies on a variety of low and high fidelity prototypes to test user interaction solutions and workflow until we arrived at a user interface design that we felt you know, was a leap forward for our product in terms of usability, efficiency, learnability, memorability, likability, and usefulness. These are the six components of what defines a usability for a system. Fantastic. So after taking these prototypes to development, we actually produced what's called the Accuson S family of ultrasound systems for general imaging. And actually, Amy here, if you would like to get started, um, is using uh, the Accuson S3000 ultrasound system right now to give you an example of some context as to how an ultrasound system is used. As you can see, she has a display in front of her, she has a user interface in front of her, and then she will use a probe or a transducer with a contact point on the abdominal exam in this case, which we view as core or bread and butter in radiology. So with this design, actually, uh, many of us kind of felt that we needed a third party non-biased assessment prior to commercialization to give us an indication of how well we could do um, in resolving some unmet needs in healthcare. Tony, actually, my colleague there, and I'm very proud of him for making this recommendation, brought to me and a few others the idea of Macadamia, a company that would be independent from Siemens that we would sponsor and provide equipment um, to do an assessment, a comparative usability assessment for ultrasound. And we are very proud as health and ears of the results of this study that gave us very positive qualitative feedback. We have definitely demonstrated that user satisfaction had improved. Um, we also have a, a really a view that we raised the quality bar in a reduction in user errors. And lastly, we think um, our comparative usability result, which Annalise will talk about a little later, really demonstrates our need to create a shift in usability in ultrasound. Um, with that, all the results are available online, and let's get moving towards some of the best practices that we took to get to this endpoint. Annalise? Great. Thank you so much, uh, Doug and Tony, for uh, the fantastic setup and providing context to the case study today that we'll be uh, referencing throughout the webinar. So let's get started with our first best practice today uh, by having Tony walk us through uh, training UX researchers.